Hey, we're continuing on with what we've been talking about in the last couple of lessons on these conditional statements, those things we can write in if-then form. And we're going to look today at another kind of conditional statement that is called a biconditional. A biconditional. So what's a biconditional statement? Well, just like bicycle, uh, we see this, this is the prefix meaning two. So it's two conditional statements that have combined into one. And this is the way you make them. A biconditional is one true statement that combines a true conditional statement and its true converse. So if we can reverse the original and they're both true statements, we can combine them into one statement, a two-for-one special called a biconditional. And there's a key phrase that you see when you read a biconditional or write one, and it's the phrase if and only if. So let's check out this first example. We first want to consider the conditional itself. And this conditional statement is true. If you read through it, if two angles are supplementary, then the sum of those two angles is 180. Let's summarize that. We've got supplementary angles. Then we have the conclusion that they add to 180. That's a true statement. Now let's look at the converse. If the converse is true, we're going to rewrite it as a biconditional. So the converse again switches those around. If I'm looking at two angles that add to 180, then are they going to be automatically considered supplementary? Two angles that add to 180 are supplementary. That's also true. So because they're both true, then I can write this as a biconditional. And the biconditional will look like this. That means that that it goes both directions. Supplementary implies 180. 180 added up implies supplementary. So we're going to use this phrase if and only if. This is how it works. We start out by looking at our hypothesis and our conclusion. And we're just simply going to join the two of those with the phrase if and only if. So it's going to be looking like this. Two angles are supplementary. If and only if their sum is 180. So right there we see that if and only if phrase. Two angles are 180 if and only if their sum is 180. Now you try the next example. Be sure you identify the hypothesis and conclusion. Write the converse and see if it's true. And if it is, then rewrite that statement as a biconditional. Pause the video and give it a shot. And we're back. All righty, so we have a polygon with four sides and it is a quadrilateral. So four sides implies a quadrilateral. Now that's a true statement. Is it still true if we switch it around? If we say a quadrilateral implies that it has four sides, a polygon that's a quadrilateral has four sides, is that also true? It is also true. So this was a reversible one. We got a true statement either direction. That means we can write a biconditional. So in this case, I'm going to write the biconditional. So in this one, I'm going to take my original, a polygon has four sides. That's my hypothesis. It is a quadrilateral is my conclusion. And I'm simply going to join those two with the phrase if and only if. So we started out this way. A polygon has four sides. If and only if it is a quadrilateral. And it's simple as that. Okay, so now in math we always want to simplify things by bringing it, bringing it down into symbols. So the symbol we use for a biconditional is this double arrow. And that double arrow, of course, is trying to indicate that the direction of the logic is both ways. So it's not only P implies Q, but it's also Q implies P, that it goes both directions. We put a double arrow on that. And that P with that double arrow and the Q is read as P if and only if. Q. P if and only if Q. So now we need to talk about what makes a good definition. In mathematics, we're, we are really concerned about getting good, precise definitions. What does make a good definition? Well, first of all, a 
good definition is going to use very clear terms. A good definition is precise. So we don't want to use words like kind of like or it's sort of like. Any of that stuff isn't really giving me a good definition. And finally, this is probably the most important part, a good definition is always reversible. And so just as we've been talking about, it, that means it can be written as a biconditional. I can say it forward or I can say it backward and it still has the same meaning. So let's get a little practice in writing a good definition. And that test of whether a definition is reversible is really going to come in handy. Let's take a look at this example here. The definition of this, pentagon, a pentagon is a polygon with exactly five sides. So let's see if this is reversible. To test this out, we're going to check out the original statement and see if it's true. Pentagon, it being a pentagon means that it's a polygon with exactly five sides. That's a true statement. But does it reverse itself? Can I write that this way? If I have exactly five sides on a polygon, that means it's a pentagon. That's true also. So that makes this a good definition. And it's reversible, but we're going to write it in the biconditional form. So that biconditional form is going to take being a pentagon, linking it to five sides with the phrase if and only if. So I would write it this way. A polygon is a pentagon if and only if it has five sides sides. How about this definition? Mrs. Pryor is a math teacher at Kybe High School. So if we break that down, this is the definition of Mrs. Pryor. Mrs. Pryor and the definition is a math teacher at Kybe High School. So let's see if this is reversible. Let's take Mrs. Pryor being Mrs. Pryor implies that you're a math teacher at Chi B. Is that a reversible statement? By the way, is that a true statement? Being Mrs. Pryor, it means you're a math teacher at Chi B. Let's say that's true. But is it reversible? So if I go the other way, being a math teacher at Chi B implies that you are Mrs. Pryor. I think Mrs. Zender and Mrs. McTavish would both agree that that is false. So it does not it is not reversible. So this means that this is not a good definition of Mrs. Pryor. And I challenge you guys to come up with a good definition of Mrs. Pryor. So let's take a look at this. This is the multiple choice here. Which of these is a good definition? Actually, I guess there could be more than one that is a good definition. Giraffes are animals with long necks. So let's break it down. Giraffe implies long neck. Just abbreviate this. Um, and having a long neck implies that you're a giraffe. Well, I think we can go one direction. If you're a giraffe, you do have a long neck. But having a long neck implies you're a giraffe. Can you think of anything else with a long neck that is not a giraffe? Maybe like a swan. That would be a good counterexample. So it's not reversible, therefore it's not a good definition. The answer to this would be a big no. Let's take a look at B. Squares have four corners. So being a square implies that I have four corners. And if we say that's true, then we need to say, is it reversible? Having four corners means that you are a square. And that, I'm going to have to again go with no. I'm thinking rectangle has four corners. And even some other quadrilaterals, like maybe this Star Trek thing, that has four corners. That's not a square either. So this is, again, this is not reversible. Therefore, it's not a good definition. It's true statement, but doesn't fit as a definition. All right, in our next one, we've got a dime, and that's defined to be a coin worth 10 cents. So we have a, if you're a dime, or if you have a dime, then it's going to automatically be a coin worth 10 cents. which is a true statement, but does it reverse itself? Can I reverse that? I have a coin that's worth 10 cents. Do I automatically know it's a dime? That's a big yes. So that definition, that's a good definition because it's reversible and it stays true. 
And our last one, a fish is an animal that swims. So again, if I have, if I'm a fish, no mocking the artwork here, then I am an animal that swims, or I swim. Can I reverse that? If I swim, am I, am, if I'm an animal that swims, am I a fish automatically? Can we say no for all the ducks that can swim out there? Ducks would be a counterexample. So that's not a good definition. Even though it's a true statement, it doesn't qualify as a good definition. All right, so the rest of these are for you to try. You're going to decide if they're a good definition, and if they're not a good definition, explain. And as part of your explanation, you can talk about whether it's reversible or not. And think up some counterexamples. You're looking for good definitions. Good luck.